What? What? Why did God allow evil to enter the world? As odd as it sounds, Is that yours, old? it was to get rid of evil. When we consider how the existence of evil is accounted for in the Bible, God didn't just know these things would happen ahead of time. Come on, you can do it. Up the hill. Up the hill. <laughs> he actually allowed them to happen as a critical part of his plan to root out the evil and destroy it forever. In other words, when he considered the implications of creating angels and then humans, both of them with the ability to obey him or to do all of the evil that would ever happen in the world, he obviously would have weighed all the good and bad outcomes before he came to a decision. I don't know if it took him a millennium or a millisecond, but at some point he decided that it was better to create than not to create. This might seem uncaring of him. To create a world where he knew that evil would happen? Some have even said that it would be evil for him to do this. Well, your mother's name is O, and I don't want to call you P. So I guess your name is Q. But he didn't just subject his creation to the effects of this evil. He chose to experience the worst of it for himself. The Bible says that Jesus was well acquainted with sorrow. And we know that his execution was by the most inhumane torture the Romans had devised. And more painful than any of that, the Bible describes Jesus' separation from God his Father for the time that he was dead. This was the breaking of the most perfect relationship between father and son that the universe will ever know. Q, look how fast you're growing. Check out those horns. Oh, never mind. But even that was not the most painful part. When I imagine the most perfect relationship that has ever existed, when God, who probably has no limit to the depth of emotion he can feel, lost his son. I doubt that we are capable of imagining the emotional cost of Jesus' death to God his Father. And when we think about Jesus dying, we often focus on his physical pain. But the only time when Jesus actually cried out, he didn't even eat your oats, was before he died to say, my God, my God. That's a sad cow. Why have you forsaken me? As his father broke their perfect relationship. I'm so sorry, oh. Because not only did God the Father stand back while he watched his son die a horrible death. This is what you were trying to tell me, isn't it? He actually turned his back on his own son because he knew this was necessary for Jesus to pay the price for our sins. Ah. So if God knew before he created us that he and his son would experience far worse than any of us, as a result of allowing evil to exist. It seems reasonable to conclude that he must have had an extremely good reason to allow evil to happen. So what was that reason? The Bible says that Jesus, God the Son, came and lived and died as a man to destroy the works of Satan, the first fallen angel. It also says that this role of Jesus was foreknown by God before the creation of the world. And it also says that it was the works of Satan that led people to falsely accuse Jesus and to nail him to the cross. So piecing that all together, by allowing evil to happen in the world and then allowing themselves to be affected by the worst of it, God the Father and God the Son 
were able to root out and break the power of evil in our lives so they could prepare a perfect place for us to live with them when this life is over. We might imagine that there should have been another way to do it, some other option where none of us would have to feel any pain. But I'm going with God on this one, because even Jesus, as he was sweating blood before he went to the cross, asked his father if there was any other way so he wouldn't have to go through with this. But in the end he said, if there is no other way, then let your will be done, not mine.